Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode five. We're Tillaxin in Texas, actually. This is the space where we were supposed to set up next, which is the Dry Creek Social Club here in Richmond, Texas. The cast and crew has all gone home for, for the most part, except for Broadway. Brian is uh, parked over here and he's been keeping an eye on things over the last five weeks. I can't believe it's been that long. This week's Activity Time episode, we're going to do something I've not done before. I started thinking where we left off with our model building, the idea that you can imagine a circus that you want to make of your own. And I thought it might be a cool thing to take you along on what was my very first expedition as a producer. It was filled with incredible challenges. It was filled with a lot of stress and uh, heat. It was like 120 degrees for a lot of the time there in Pomona, California. But ultimately, it was one of the most extraordinary experiences uh, up to that moment because it showed me that I could do it. And more than that, we, uh, a team, uh, can do it. Really anything we set our minds to. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, without further ado, here is the 2014 original Bernardo Circus at the LA County Fair. That's Jim Klimek, ladies and gentlemen. I met Jim, he uh, had actually worked with Danielle Espana, who is my longtime collaborator and partner as choreographer. Uh, I think they worked on a pirate show out there in Myrtle Beach. And he was a uh, castaway on an island little island and he was living in LA and somehow I convinced him to come along with me and make this show. I love this kind of Huck Finn kind of look. We talked about that and really wanted to make that happen. This <laughs> seeing these images is, makes me feel a lot of things. First of all, the jacket that I'm wearing right there. On the last day of this fair run, somehow, I don't know who or I don't know how, but it was missing from my wardrobe box on the last day on the road. Crushing. I love that jacket. All the ones I've made since somehow have not really measured up exactly the way that one turned out, especially the stones. And even more will amaze, will yes. delight, will explore and excite. That's Lamont, Tales Good. The gentleman is doing the hand balancing. Now that's Dave Snyder. <laughs> oh, Dave. He was. Okay, uh, Emily Pennington and Karen Mawson on the right there, dancers, and they're also going to be aerialists. You'll see them later in the show. That little tent that you see in the background there, that's actually... Uh, that was before I owned the little tent that we actually bought the one that um, became our mini big top in 2015. This one in 2014 and the, the aerial frame, uh, they actually were rented from a place called LA Circus that's up in Riverside, California, Winnie McKay. Winnie McKay runs LA Circus. They're an outfit that, that creates uh, amazing environments for circus-themed movies, uh, the movie Carnival. Or, no, movie. There's an HBO series called Carnival a long time ago. There's also, uh, what do you call it, uh, American Horror Show, American Horror Story, a TV show. Uh, they create a lot of the environments and the props. They have amazing props. So they helped make this little tent, that little pedestal I'm on there. <clears throat> and they helped me set it up too. Circus, Circus, Las Vegas, and Bernardos now present Wondrous World Apart. The band is hot, the stakes are huge. 
but danger does not shirk us. With all my heart, I proudly give you my own Bernardo Santos! This is actually only being filmed because a great friend of mine has become a great friend of mine. Ryan Esvito. Uh, he showed up at the LA County Fair and he'd actually already been shooting uh, circuses and Circus Vargas, he's in California there. And he's a guy who makes documentaries. So he, over the following, I mean, up until today, he's been to see virtually every show that we've done with his 4K camera. And we are currently in production with a awesome documentary that has interviews and footage of basically everyone I've ever done a show with uh, up till today. I'm really, really grateful. Ryan, if you're watching, what's up, dude? Can't wait for that uh, to launch. It's in the work to make a real good documentary. And we also wanted to watch the thing, the, the story unfold, which comes so far since 2014. That face you're looking right there at, ladies and gentlemen, the red eyes, and you know how tired I am. It's in the evening time right now, and it's cool ish. But this is Pomona, California, and it's late August, early September. So the daytime is sunny and it's 100 degrees. It's just, there's no way around it. We're also located in this little alley called, well, they call the circus area at LA County Fair, which is populated uh, with circus themed stuff. Shows, some of them would be like a trapeze show. This was our little circus Broadway show. <clears throat> and so there's like the world's largest uh, cow across the street. And so their loud pre recorded music is playing. And it's sometimes just as loud as the show which frustrated me to no end. Jim? Jim has a sweetness to him. <laughs> sometimes, I, I guess I have a hard time with the clown sometimes. I don't know if that's a genetic thing or just one of my own defects or just the nature of being a ringmaster and, uh, and hiring a clown. Jim's an incredibly talented guy. I think he actually, just before this pandemic hit here, he uh, had been hired by Soleil after being in Vegas for many years with, uh, I believe, where is that, what is that, at the uh, Excalibur, the, I'm forgetting what the name of it, but it's, it's a, a Renaissance themed show where there's knights jousting, etc. Anyways, he'd been there for several years. He just got hired by Soleil out there in, in uh, I think, actually, it's abroad up in Europe. But here he had just been in L.A. for a little while. He actually went to the same college as I did, Ithaca College. A weird other connection. In the background you see there, uh, that piece of truss that's kind of bolted to the ground. You can't see that it's bolted, but it is. That's the motor, and you're going to see it later on. And that lifts the aerialist up in the ground. There it is again on the frame, on the right hand side. I actually am operating the, the motor when, when it happens. I was the sound guy and the motor operator. Uh, I also wrote the checks too. This is very exciting. Boy, that ring curb. We had just built that also. This is the first time it had appeared. I painted it a darker red than I ended up wanting. I wanted a brighter cherry red. We did it right the next year. Emily Pennington and Karen Mawson. 
they came and uh, auditioned for us. We actually held an audition in LA at the Cirque School. Me and Danielle Espana uh, were there, and boy, since then it's been very difficult to have a real uh, go see people audition. I would really try and meet with people, but that usually has since then, since this time, has happened on an individual basis and with videos and such. And sometimes I'm on the road, I don't have time to come and hold an audition. But they showed up and they had a, an awesome duo Lyra act, which particularly because I only have a, this single A frame, so I didn't have, you could see the white shot there. There's not a lot of room for what's called an orbit. So imagine holding the, the lira and running around in a circle and being lifted up into the air to get that kind of, like you're orbiting the sun, imagine. Uh, so finding an aerial act with some dynamics that was exciting and moved and not just the kind of, um, what do you call it? Uh, adagio kind of thing that you usually see on, on a lira act. I was just getting started too, so this was exciting to me how they're able to make these shapes and when they bring their bodies in closer, it makes the spin faster. I always thought those were really cool. We made these costumes too, and uh, I don't remember who helped me with these. I think it was Carolina, Spanian knock, Michelangelo knock. They they put those stones on there. Thank you to the knock family. <laughs> you listen to the music. This song is actually. George Gershwin. If you don't know who George Gershwin is, George Gershwin is. We can still be friends, but I highly recommend going to check him out. And this amazing piece of violin music, all these strings in here, is actually from Rhapsody in Blue. The whole number is uh, a techno version of Rhapsody in Blue, which when I do it again, I, I want to continue to refine and do it better. But I love the idea, man. George Gershwin was... Jewish kid from Brooklyn and he made some of the most incredible contributions to the American songbook uh, of all time perhaps certainly in my mind I love that and I love Rhapsody in Blue my dad would also adored that song he had it on his Walkman tapes that he would listen to when he went on uh, business trips it there. You'll also notice I think that it's dark outside now but suddenly it's daylight here because I just clipped these together from a couple of different performances. But basically that's the structure of the show. You're not missing time. Oh boy. <laughs> I love patter songs. I love rap too. You know, I don't listen to a lot of rap. I'm not an anti rap listening. I, I just, I often love uh, song music. Music where I sing a melody. But there's something awesome about words. So that was a little tip of the hat to uh, one of the oldest rap songs. <laughs> or this is Lamont Tales Good, who was at the time, he, and I, he's certainly still around. He has uh, an amazing Instagram page and an amazing look, which I always loved. 
Uh, he calls what he does cyber yoga. At the time, I really didn't realize how important it is to put an act like this up on a table, to raise it up off the floor. It really gives so much more excitement to what the artist is doing. And also Lamont was just getting started really putting an act together. He was creating these shapes and taking a lot of pho photography of different poses uh, that were drawn from yoga. And yet he has this urban look and feel, and the way he would dress, the way he moves, uh, which of course I, I, I definitely love the look of it. And I love the passion with which he was pursuing things. Yeah, he, uh, also, we were not able to get a level bit of ground here. So you can see that we just brought this piece of plexiglass in, which I had to buy at the 11th hour because, well, he didn't anticipate it was going to be a problem, and I didn't either. Uh, but he does this awesome head spin trick, which was one of the big reasons why I wanted to have him there. And because the ground was uneven, he can usually hold this thing for like a minute, but he keeps moving. As you can see, his head is sliding to the back there because the ground is uneven and you can't spin on your head and stay in one place and therefore hold it uh, without the ground being nice and even. We thought that we would resolve it by putting a piece of plexiglass on the ground, but it didn't work out. Anyways, he, we still made it work. and well, This is one of my favorite sequences, uh, just musically. Um, this little bit of music at the top is Smile, which was written by Charlie Chaplin. You know, Charlie Chaplin's an incredibly famous clown and actor and director and writer. And I had this idea of putting these two songs together, Smile and Sing in the Rain. And it ended up kind of working out. It really was Jim and I who put together the idea. I knew I wanted us to have a little dance routine in there. Um, and Danielle and I sort of musically mapped out where that would be, but and during one of the performances, uh, I dislocated my left knee during this number. <laughs> and I kept going and finished the number. And we had dozens more shows after that. But if you ever dislocated your knee, you will know it's not something that you ever, ever want to do again. You notice the lyric at the end of the song here. With a little, a little tag of that smile song at the end there. I look forward to reviving this sequence again at some future Leonardo Circus production. It's a lot of fun. It can be wet sometimes. But... <laughs> Dave Snyder is this spooky looking monster guy. He had been actually doing monster work in LA and I met him uh, where I also met our amazing digital uh, marketing manager. She's really one of the creative forces of an artist circus, uh, Jasmine Ellsworth. I met Jasmine and I met Dave at this uh, fire. It's called the, the Dragon's Nest. Uh, there are fire artists and fire fire enthusiasts, people who are totally just beginners, and Dave was just beginning at this time. 
and there's other, other accomplished people as well. Just a, a meeting of fire minds, and it's uh, it was started by uh, Jefferson ba Jefferson Bell, my friend Jefferson Bellew, B A L L E W. I always forget how to pronounce your name, Bellew. Anyway, I met him at this uh, meetup. I was just looking for artists, and I loved the way that he looked, and I loved his his energy, wild and wacky, and he has this really awesome uh, flexibility. Dave does. Karen and Emily did just an awesome job with creating some of the atmosphere of this act. There's not much to this act. If you take a look at it, there's a couple of puffs of fire. Uh, he, he, we built these uh, different little torches that we put in the ground that you saw him lighting at the top, and the staff there. We had all these complicated plans that uh, you could pull a, a lever and snuff out the flame. Uh, they didn't really work particularly well. <clears throat> See that, that uh, torch in the background there, but basically he wandered in and uh, he had this crazy, you know, vision. And I love the hair, I love the, the eyeglasses. Blowing fire is not something that you... I think it's something that you really want to do and as safe as you wish to be and to surround yourself with people who have experience and know how to do it, uh, there's a point where you gotta try things. I don't suggest anyone watching this to do anything that is happening here. I'm not saying that you should do fire, uh, but I am saying that if you, if you do do it, I, I'm just telling you my experience working with other people, it's kind of like a trapeze artist. Uh, there's only one way to learn doing it, and, and then you, you go and do it, and you do it again and again. Uh, being safe. Whew. And no matter how safe you are, there's a toll that it naturally takes on you. Uh, it's not gasoline in his mouth, by the way. It's a kind of paraffin oil. Super clean. friend Melissa Hellowell who was across the alley there with a show called This End Up, a sort of modern circus. She was helping back there. Uh, Melissa. I can't wait till we all are hanging out like that again. There's nothing better than being with a crowd of people. And you look at that 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 setup right there. Even though there's just trees and open air on that drone shot there, you, I can see the tent around it. <laughs> I I was imagining it. Got the disco ball. In later years of the LA County Fair, we had hay bales put out there, but this, our first go, people just stood there and watched the show for half an hour, 40 minutes. I, I couldn't really believe it. So grateful. This drone footage was actually taken by a guy named Ray Pierce, who, uh, well, he had a school in L.A. for a time, trapeze school, but he does stunts and such like that. He had a trapeze show that was directly across the street. When I say across the street, this street right there in the frame. Where the drone is right now, it's up right next to a big outdoor trapeze uh, rig. 
he was very kind and he's the one who lent me that motor that's there that I used to raise and lower the, the X and he took these shots for us. There's the giant steer. <coughs> and that's the, uh, that's the first production of the Monaro Circus at the L.A. County Fair. I look at it and they see a lot of errors. I see a lot of things that need to get fixed. I see a lot of striving. It reminds me also when I look at what life was like then and I think of... I was living in an apartment in, uh, in the valley in, uh, in L.A. And... Uh, <laughs> I didn't have very much food in my refrigerator at that time. I was pretty slim, sweating my butt off every day, working there for sure, and just didn't have a lot of food, period. And so glad that we kept going. So glad that we stuck with it. If you guys have an idea for a cool thing that you would like to see, I would love to hear your thoughts. So share those comments with me. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thanks for joining us. Sending lots of love to everyone out there in America and around the world. And I'll see you very soon. Bye for now, everybody.